I developed an extruder that can print with so soft and elastic TPU that people will say and call it fake. But what if I tell you that this is not fake and actually 3D printed and that this extruder can 3D print any flexible and elastic material at speeds multiple times higher than any conventional extruder in the world. This sounds so unreal, but the funny thing is it's actually true. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is the most flexible and elastic TPU people usually can print with, which represents basically the limit. With my extruder, however, I managed to print a TPU that is so soft and elastic it can't even hold its own weight. When you try to stretch it, it stretches 10 times its own length. <laughs> and when I throw it at my wall, <laughs> then it sticks to it. Why? Well, it's an octopus and everybody knows they can run on walls. But jokes aside, in this video I have three goals. One, explain to you why it's impossible to 3D print el extremely elastic materials on normal FDM 3D printers even with a good direct drive fix to them. Two, explain to you how I managed to solve many of these issues, but also why my extruder can 3D print flexible materials at much faster speeds than any conventional extruder. Three, with the ability to print much softer TPUs, I want to see if we finally can make, for example, a 100% 3D printed slingshot, which also includes the sling itself, since this is the part you normally can't just 3D print. If this attempt succeeds, then this means that we can suddenly 3D print things no one ever could 3D print before, like real rubber and resistant bands for sports, dildos and toy vaginas for the bedroom, or like in my case, a simple slingshot. The point is, this opens up a completely new variety of possibilities, which in the same way were never possible before. So let's get started. Before we get into the how I solved everything part, let's take first a look at the reasons behind the issues that many people have with flexible 3D printing materials. Recently, the YouTuber Makers Muse made a really, really great tutorial on how to print TPU, in which he also explained the problems in a really great way. Here's what he said. Printing in TPU can be really challenging or almost impossible. Let me explain why. Imagine you have your extruder here and the hot end, and there's a gap between the gears of the extruder and that hot end. The filament up to the path of the extruder is being pulled off the roll. So that's not so much of a problem. You can pull the flexible material and like a rope, it'll just tug along and beat into the extruder, no problem. It's when it's being pushed out of those extruder gears into the hot end that you start to encounter an issue. Because this material is flexible, it'll bend and shift and try to find the path of least resistance. Instead of being pushed through the hot end and melted, it'll try to spill out the side or tangle around the gears or just strip in the gears entirely because it's so soft and your print fails. So this is the reason that all extruders and 3D printers used to struggle so much with TPU. This is issue number one, very well explained by him, linked to his video in the description. The other issue is that the more flexible and soft a filament gets, the harder it is to 3D print with it. Which is why filament manufacturers over the years started to produce more and more TPU or TPE filaments that are less soft and less flexible which makes it easier to print, but then they're just less flexible and less soft, so this issue isn't really solved. This also explains why you can't really 3D print flexible materials very fast, because if you want to print fast, then you need to extrude more material, and when you do that, the chances of jamming your extruder are hotened and experiencing under extrusion significantly increases. And no matter what kind of innovation of the last years appeared in the area of 3D printing, we still cannot 3D print literally soft and elastic materials until now. But what changes did I make in order to let all these issues disappear? The thing is, I thought about this for a very long time and came up with the conclusion that the general principle most extruders are based upon, which is basically taking some kind of plastic string, or in our case TPU string, and trying to push it forward through a hot nozzle cannot be really the best physical way to 3D print with soft and elastic materials. While this approach works to some degree with relatively hot TPU and TPE materials, it still is the same as if you try to put cube-like wheels on a car and then expect it to drive the same way. Obviously it doesn't work because cube-like wheels are simply not made for that. In the same way, however, we try to feed your print with flexible and soft materials and then we are sad because things don't turn out as we want them to be. With this in mind, I knew a new approach is necessary. And after some development time, I made a new extruder. 
In this video, I won't explain too much of how it works in details, since I have done this already in my video Palette Extruder for any 3D printer. But the big difference to normal extruders is that it prints with TPU, which is in granules or in pellet form. By the way, also significantly cheaper than TPU filament, since that is literally what TPU filaments or basically all filaments are made out of. You can also 3D print other materials in granules form like chocolate and other plastics, PLA and so on. But this video is just about the flexible ones. The TPU I'm using in this video has a short hardness of less than 5A, which is 12 times more flexible and elastic than the TPU most people barely can 3D print with. It is so elastic that you can stretch it up to more than 10 times its own length. But how can you get this into this? The short answer is that instead of pushing a piece of filament forward, we now have a bunch of granulated material and force feed it through our nozzle with the help of this barrel and extruder screw you see right here. By taking off this little part here, we can turn the extruder from gravity feed mode to force feed mode which is going to grab those soft TPU pellets and extrude them by force whether they want it or not. Unlike with conventional extruders, you won't get a jam when you try to extrude more TPU. The only effect you have when you turn the extruder screw faster is that you <laughs> extrude more TPU and that's it. Before I try to feed you print the promised slingshot, I want you to see with your own eyes the extrusion power of this extruder with soft materials. By 3D printing, this weird mask that I designed. I forgot to mention the printing process is exactly the same as with your typical filament extruders and the printers are also the same. What you see right here is my $200 Creality and their 3 v 2 which I just upgraded with my extruder. So this is the mask I talked about. The first layer got messed up a little bit because the nozzle was too close to the bed which ended up with a lot of over extrusion but this is just my first test. Don't judge me. <laughs> But what you still see here is the extruder pumping out 30 cubic millimeters of 5A TPU per second, which is, by the way, completely impossible to do on typical filament extruders. And in this sequence where I printed the octopus, you can clearly see here that despite printing with a 12 times softer TPU, we still can print relatively fast with a 1 millimeter nozzle without any problems. If I would use a more harder TPU or TPE with a short hardness of let's say 30A, then I could print much faster. When you 3D print with a material that is much softer and elastic than a gummy bear and can barely hold its own weight, then vibrations are gonna make your 3D print shake while 3D printing. Taller 3D prints are more prone to this shaking effect, but you can solve this issue by adjusting the acceleration speed to a suitable value. There are also these uh, Coex Y 3D printers, which basically have a 3D printing bed that moves only up and down, that produces basically zero vibrations. And this is ideal for 3D printing really fast, really flexible and elastic materials, like here. But whatever you think at the moment, please just keep in mind that the TPU I'm printing with falls into the category of extremely elastic and flexible TPUs, which means there are many other grades of TPU that might be better for your individual use case since they are not too elastic or flexible like mine. This here is, by the way, the mask that I 3D printed. And like I said, those materials, this TPU, this is just completely something different that you probably never experienced before. And the funny thing is, obviously this is basically a little bit failed, but you can actually wear this by, yeah, <laughs> by having these rubber bands and you can basically just, like a mask or like a shoe, take them and put them on, basically. That's just a really ridiculous, <laughs> very interesting and funny thing, but um, very scary, right? I think now I'm ready to rob a bank. Obviously, I'm just playing around here a little bit with this material. I forgot to mention I spray painted this mask, uh, which is why I have shattered paint now all over me. But maybe for makeup artists or like movie props, like in The Walking Dead, where they have this zombie mask, this might be very helpful and useful for maybe just 3D printing these things. But does all of this also allow us to 3D print practical elastic parts like a slingshot? Well, my plan is to 3D print the handle part in PLA and the important sling out of this extremely elastic TPU. Plus there is this little clip which we use to propel our projectile. So these are now the parts and they're printed flawlessly 
without any problems except for the handle where I just had some bad first layer adhesion. But besides that, there was no problem. Also with the elastic sling, which basically, like I said, is going to propel our balls. The thing is, it's a very easy design. We just put this on top of here and then like a rubber band, you just twist it and here is our slingshot. The funny thing is back in the day when I was in school and bored in the classroom, I used to make these little kind of spit paper bolts and a spit pipe out of rolling a piece of paper. And every time the teacher was writing something on the blackboard, I started to shoot these spit bolts on my friends. And sometimes when they were wet enough, they stick to the walls and skin. And these spit balls I have here are a bit bigger, but it should also work when I just shoot at my wall in the back with the slingshot. Let's try out if it actually works. And just keep in mind, this is a first prototype, but I think we should have no problem at all at shooting with them. But this is just a failed attempt and I'm not a good archer or slingshot man. The, the other thing is that this little part right here, which is supposed to propel our little balls, is also isn't really that well designed. And the TPU is actually way too soft to be a slingshot sling, but I think it still could work well if I would know how to shoot it properly. Yeah, that was also a fail, but I think the last one might actually work really well. Uh, well, it didn't work as I wanted it to be, but there were some iterations where it actually worked really well, but I just assembled it really awfully as you see right here. But I think if you do a proper design and make some iterations and tests, then this could be actually quite powerful since you can really stretch it. But I always wondered what would happen if you, for instance, mix soft TPU with hard TPU within the same extruder and 3D print with that. Would this give us a middle hard TPU alloy with mixed properties? The thing is, I'm just very curious and I want to find out. Since I don't have at the moment hard TPU pellets, I decided to make the effort cutting down TPU filament into small pieces, which took some time. But in the end, I had enough of these cut pellets to make some experiments. Then I mixed 70% soft TPU pellets with 30% of my hard TPU filament. So let's see whether we can video print with that at all. So this is our result, the octopus with the mixed hard TPU and soft TPU. The thing is, they definitely already differentiate from the color. This is basically the pure soft TPU, which is, like I mentioned, extremely elastic. But the other one now, which is, like I said, a little bit harder TPU, but most of it is actually soft TPU. And it, it is still squishy a little bit and still flexible, but it's not elastic really. Look, I can basically squish this one extremely, but this one not. I also extruded here way too fast. The T TPU simply could not cool enough, but I wonder what happens when I try to rip off one leg. Well, it seems like the same happens as with regular hard TPUs that are simply not elastic. They just stretch, but then they can't remain it and they basically get lengthened. What's interesting right now that the hard TPU basically broke off, but the soft one still remains. And now we get the soft one actually here, but now it broke off. The thing is with the pure one, it is still so elastic, you can stretch it so long and nothing happens. So these are some shredded PLA prints from my last video in which I directly 3D printed with these granules through my extruder to recycle my 3D printing waste. And now I really wonder what's gonna happen when we mix these PLA granules with our TPU pellets and try to print an octopus again. I also added some blue sprinted PLA pellets to give us a little blue-like color. The thing is, I'm not the chemistry master, but I know that some plastics on a molecular level stick to each other when melted and some don't. It is said that when you want to print PLA, for example, on top of TPU, that these layers won't really stick to each other. But what if both materials melt together and get mixed by the extruder screw within the extruder. Maybe instead of chemically bonding them, this whole mixing process might mechanically kind of mix them and this might give a good layer adhesion and maybe some interesting properties. But I don't know, so let's find out. So our attempt to create a TPU PLA alloy 
was basically a little bit weird. At first, we got the regular TPU and a bit of mixture with PLA. Then it started to change a little bit its color to this, I don't know if you can see this little bit light bluish and it already lost, but didn't lose, but basically is not as elastic or flexible anymore. It's like as if there is this PLA just being PLA, but when you break it, then as you can see, the remaining TPU that is inside prevents the whole thing from... It's like once the PLA broke off, the TPU still holds everything together. A very weird material. And after purging more and more material, we got this blue-like thin filament, which already lost its elasticity. It is like a very soft PLA. It does have some flex to it, but it's not really elastic. It, it does break off a little bit elastic. And I don't know if you can see it. It has this, these kind of stretch marks every time when it breaks in a very weird and not normal way. I then tried to print an octopus and this failed attempt to 3D print with this PLA TPU mixture. The thing is, this is very, very weird right now because it has, even though this is basically kind of 40% PLA and 60% TPU, it does have some flex to it, if you can see, but it's very rigid. You do have flex, but not elastic in any way. And the layer adhesion is also like, you, as if you have really have two different materials mixed in each other and sharing their properties, but very unevenly. The extrusion rate was also completely different than what I experienced with the TPU versions. And I was trying to figure out the right extrusion value, but I was just shifting between 50 to 200% and couldn't find the right one, which is why we got so much over and under extrusion in the same part. But still, you do have like this flexible nature in it. When I tried to break off one tentacle, this thing happens here. It's like really mixed PLA with TPU, which is very strange, kind of very unnatural, as if you have fibers in the PLA. Well, I do not recommend probably to try printing TPU and PLA at the same time, since they are not really compatible to each other. But in the end, it is still very interesting to see what we can do with such an extruder, printing with extremely soft TPU, doing crazy elastic things, um, mixing different kind of TPU grades to, to just benefit from the different properties and getting basically the results that you want. And like I said, this of course is a failed experiment with this PLA TPU alloy mixture, but there are many, many cases where it works brilliantly. And like I already mentioned multiple times, not just with plastic, but also what if you do that with chocolate and other materials. By the way, I would be very thankful if you could spare a minute of your time to fill out my short extruder survey so that I can improve this extruder and make it available to you, which you'll find in the description below. You will also get a very nice reward for this. What this reward will be is a secret for now, but trust me, you won't regret it. That's it for today and goodbye.